let me ask you a question. How up are you on the, what David said? Things to David. David said it is good. What's that? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Okay, I don't know whether you thought about it or not, but I think it'd be a great way to start this morning, don't you? Okay, and David said, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Isn't it though? To know his graciousness to us, to allow us health and strength, to allow us the opportunity to still meet and to worship God and, and to share our faith. And also the health, but the protection and the fact that we live in a country where we still have this freedom. We have so much to be thankful for, don't we? You know, we, uh, we talk about Thanksgiving once a year, right? Thanksgiving. But certainly every day is a day to give thanks to the Lord. So let's just bow our heads together. And there's a special blessing on your heart that you want to thank him for. You thank him for that blessing, okay? And let's just pray together as we go to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, it is a good, a good thing to, to meet with your children, to have this opportunity to just worship and fellowship. Lord, to just see the smiles on each face and, and to shake a hand and just to feel the comfort that comes from, from knowing that, that you're with people that love the Lord and love you and what a blessing it's been. But Father, now we come and we ask that you would speak to us in the very needs of our heart. There's not a one of us in here that you're not aware of, that you don't know about, that you, that you don't know the secret parts of our heart and our life. And yet you love us and you care for us. And I just pray this morning that you would speak to those areas. Lord, encourage us where we're discouraged and, and where we need to, to draw closer, where we need to uh, have sins forgiven. Whatever it is, Father, by your Spirit, would you just move and work. And we want to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise for it's yours. And we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, it is good to have you with us. Uh, we're going to sing a song this morning. It says, My faith looks up to thee. Do you know everybody has faith? Everybody has faith. Faith in something. Some people have faith and hope and prayer that, that there's no God. I think that's why you hear so many people proclaiming that now. But, but their hope is that there's no God because if there's no God, they don't have to answer for their life and who they are. And some people have faith in their own good works. And yet the Bible says that all of our good works is filthy rags. They don't work. And some people have faith in what others have done. You know, well, mom and dad were Christian. Grandpa and grandma was a Christian. And they've all been in this church for a thousand years, you know. But we're not grandchildren to God. We have to have a personal relationship. Well, this song says... My faith looks up to thee. To who? To God. So let's sing together about it as we stand and sing page 509.
Now you may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, I am thankful for everyone that's here. It's uh, you know, a good place to get encouragement throughout after the week and to be around uh, fellow believers and people that love one another. So thank you all. Um, last week, Doug uh, did a little announcement on Lottie Moon, the uh, Normally it's a Christmas offering. We're doing it a little bit after this year. So Doug's got a short video for that. Right. On family, your IMB missionaries serving in Ghana and West Africa. It's been a while since you've seen us, so I thought we'd go around and everybody give a little update. He's already <laughs> bored. Hopefully the video is that boring. All right, let me try that one again. Here we go. <laughs> We can't do this if you have the giggles. I can't stop. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Daddy. Hey. We just wanted to give you an update on what we've been doing this past year in our lives and ministry here in Africa. I'm Heidi. I'm a surgeon here at the Baptist Medical Center. COVID-19 definitely had an effect on our work here. Not so much that we had many cases, but that our regular volunteers weren't coming because of the restrictions and the travel and the pandemic itself. Thankfully, our regular volunteers have started to come back. Even through the IMB, two physician's assistants have come out to help me and have been an incredible help. And with their help, I've been able to take more opportunities to share the gospel. And some of my patients have really come to understand God's grace and also chosen to follow Jesus and are now a part of the body of believers. Hey, I'm Trey, I'm 15. I like to play guitar, make music, and unicycle. The music we're hearing right now on this video, Trey performed and recorded and arranged, but uh, unicycling. So what's your latest unicycling trick? My latest unicycling tricks are push mush and the 360 unispin. Okay, that 360 is kind of fast. We're gonna have to slow that down so people can appreciate it. Very cool. Hi, my name is KJ. I'm six years old and I like to color, paint, and draw, and I want to show you one of my paintings. I'm William, and I work in media for the International Mission Board. When I'm here locally, I preach in some local village churches, but once uh, the pandemic travel restrictions lightened, I was able to start traveling again, and I went throughout Western Africa, Southern Africa, and even to Europe, documenting the work that your missionaries are doing around the world. And I've got to tell you, you should be so proud to be a Southern Baptist. Because of your giving to the cooperative program and the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, you fund almost 3,700 missionaries all around the world, working with unreached peoples who've never heard the gospel, working with refugees and the marginalized peoples around the world, and they're making an incredible impact. And I get to see that firsthand. And my family is so grateful to you because we are one of those. We receive funding and support from you, from your church. And so we're grateful and we thank you for that. We ask that you prayerfully consider how you're going to be giving this year to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering, which goes 100% to your missionaries around the world. And it allows you to be a partner with us in seeing God's kingdom advance. Thank you. I like how they had the bloopers, the kind of blooper in the beginning. I always watch the bloopers on DVDs and stuff. Um, and so the, we, there are, I think there are envelopes, but if you just, uh, you can also designate on your regular offering if you want to for the Lottie Moon. I think we do it for a couple more weeks. Uh, next Sunday will be the last one. Next Sunday is going to be the last one. Okay. And then for other announcements, uh, in the back of the bulletin, there's uh, some bulleted announcements. Is there anything that anyone wants me to emphasize or what needs emphasized this morning out of that list in the back? Okay. Otherwise, just take a peek at those and read over them. Um, for our scripture reading this morning, we're in Revelation. And uh, it's chapter 3. Verse, we'll read 14 through 22 through 22. This is a, uh, this 
can be a tough, kind of tough scripture to, to read and hear. It is, um, kind of always serves as a wake up, kind of a wake up call. So it's uh, Revelation 3, verse, we'll start at 14. So it says, and to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? These things says the amen, the faithful and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, what you are, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Amen. That beginning part, it is tough, but then he he provides a way. He he explains how we should be. So, amen. Um, For prayer requests, we have our prayer list in the Bible. I mean, in the bulletin. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. She's still in the hospital. Oh, she's coming home. Yep. We had a prayer request from another. For, um, so, uh, yep, she was in an accident. And I. Yep. yep. So, pretty serious. So, pray for the Canaan family. Pray for McKenna. Pray her for her family and her friends. Um, give them strength. Yeah. yeah. Chris, I, I have a question about this kidding. Yeah. My two granddaughters, uh, Chloe and uh, Kendall, was coming home from school and she towed the car. And neither one of them was hurt and neither was anybody else. So we're, Great. we're very thankful. Yeah. 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 Amen. Anyone else? All right, let us pray. Father, we thank you uh, for the opportunity to come to you this morning, Lord, to share our uh, our, uh, concerns and petitions, and uh, we thank you that you hear us, and uh, we thank you that uh, you are powerful and the one in control, and... uh, we just ask for your uh, your help in reminding us this week to pray over this list we have, Lord, to lift these people's names up and uh, to do that throughout the week. And uh, we do pray for them, pray for their the needs of salvation and uh, and healing and strength. And uh, Lord, we just uh, thank you for. Uh, for watching over Mark's granddaughters, Lord, and uh, for uh, for having your hand in that situation, and for uh, just just for the protection you provide, and Lord, uh, we we know you're with uh, McKenna and the Canaan family too, and Lord, we don't know why things happen the way they do, but uh, there's a reason. And uh, we just pray that you would strengthen that family, those friends, and uh, heal her, and uh, ultimately that you would be glorified in some way. 
And uh, Lord, we just thank you and love you. And uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And uh, Wilbur, <laughs> Wilbur's going to come and lead us in a hymn, and then we'll have a couple guys come up and do our offering. Please stand as we sing hymn number 237. I stand in the amazed in the presence. to give back a portion that you so allow us to have. We pray that the leadership of this church will use the wisdom of your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. You may be seated. Before we sing this morning, I just wanted to read a little bit from the book of Revelation to kind of explain the song that we're going to sing. I'd like to start at uh, Revelation 21, starting at verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the great city of holy Jerusalem, descending now of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also he had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gate and names written of them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall in the city had 12 fountain foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city is laid out as four squares in length and is great as its breath. And it measures the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs, its length, breadth, and height are equal. Then he measured it, measured its walls, 144 cubic, according to the measure of man, that is, of an angel. The construction of the walls was jasper, and the city was pure gold, like city glass, city clear glass. The foundations of the walls, the cities were adorned with all kinds of precious stone. The first foundation was, was jasper, the second one sapphire, the other one a chaldron, the fourth an emerald. And I'm gonna stop that there and I'm gonna move over to Revelation 22, starting in verse 12. And this is Jesus speaking. And behold, I am coming quickly. My reward is with me to give to everyone according to his works. I am the Alpha and the Omega, Omega, the beginning and the end, and the first and the last. May God add his blessings to his word. And I hope you would like to come and... <coughs> God has given us a glimpse of what heaven must be like. And uh, it's just, I really don't think man can really comprehend the beauty that, that God has given us or going to give us. And I like that verse there when he says, I come and I bring my rewards to give to those, okay, that has kept his commandments. So we all know that there is a reward. And the name of the song is How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. We read of a place that's called heaven. Oh, 
Thank you. How good do you want to be? You, you know, what do you want to excel in? It is amazing to me that people have certain goals. You know, some people, their goal is to be the best they are to whatever sport they play. Uh, even though it may be a sport that never pays a dime, you know, never to go pro professional, but, but it put a lot of energy in being the best they possibly can be. And some people work hard at being the best they can be at their work, their employment. They want to be the top. And that's, down, that's honorable. I, I have nothing against wanting to excel at work. That, God says, do whatever you do to the glory of the Lord, right? Amen. right? And some people, you know, have goals to be the best they can be health-wise. But what's strange is how seldom the goal of our life is to be absolutely the best Christian we can be. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we all say, in our life, God's first, right? Family second. Government next, right? Country right, you know? Somewhere down the line. Well, if God's first, why do we give such little effort to it? Isn't that a question? I want to read for you an interesting passage of Scripture. And I, you may have read over it and kind of stumbled over it and went on, never paid much attention to it. But it's about a king of England, or king of England, king of Israel, okay, got their own nation, king of, king of Israel uh, by the name of Re Rehoboam. Now, he has the distinguished designation of being Solomon's son and inherits the kingdom from Solomon. But here's something that takes place in, in chapter 12 of Second Chronicles. It says this, So Shishka, the king of Egypt, came against Jerusalem and took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. And he took all and carried away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. And instead of which King Rehoboam made shields of brass, and committed into the hands of his chief of his guards to keep the entrance of the king's house. And when the king entered into the house of the Lord, the guards came and fetched them and brought them again into the guards' chamber. And when he ambled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, and he took courage and put away the abominations of the idols out of the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the city that he had taken from the Ephraim and renewed the altars of the Lord that had been before the people. And I think my pages stuck together, and I read the, the rest of a different verse, but that's all right. But here I want you to notice what happened. The king had taken the shields of gold. Now, the shields of gold were interesting. Solomon, in order, you know, displaying his wealth and displaying his might, had 300 shields of solid gold, beaten gold made. And there was three pounds of gold in each shield. Now, each shield, according to my calculations, and I don't know how accurate it is, but at our today's price, you'd probably be looking at about $100,000 a shield. And he had 300 of them made. So we're talking about Solomon putting a lot of expense into making these shields. Would you not agree? And what was the purpose of it? Well, the purpose of it was to display the glory. I'm sure Solomon would say of the Lord, but it was also the glory of Solomon. And so when he would go out, he would have 300 shield barriers, and they'd take these bright golden shields and hold them, and it would reflect the sunshine. Can you imagine the beauty of it? I mean, we'd kind of ooh and all over just a little piece of gold around a ring, you know, around your finger. But, but here is a shield, three pound of solid gold. And see it catching the reflection of the suns and flashing and 
You know, this is before smoke and mirrors like we have today. The king in all of his glory. And when they weren't being used, they were kept in the house of the force of Lebanon, which was the museum for Israel. And there they was put on display again so people could see the riches of the king. Well, let's fast forward. Rehoboam was, I guess you'd say, a spoiled son as much as anything else when he was king. And he had put heavy burdens upon the people. But he also had led the people into idol worship. And he had caused the priests of the Lord to cease their practice of what God had called them to do. So he had really destroyed the religious atmosphere, the religious life of the Israelites. And so God is judging him, and he has swore that he's going to destroy the whole. But then when the people see, they repent, and so God says, okay, you'll lose most of your kingdom, but you'll still be king, and I still will watch over you, but not at the degree that you inherited from Solomon. And here's what it says. The Rehoboam made brass and shields, copper shields. Now, if you compare the price of copper to gold, there's quite a bit of difference, right? I mean, now they say gold's what, about $1,900 an ounce. And if I'm not mistaken, there's 12 ounces of gold in a pant, the way it's calculated. So, so you're looking, you know, about seventy, you know, seventy thousand dollars a pound, something like that. Uh, wait a minute, twenty-seven thousand, three pounds, seventy thousand. I, I, I get that all put together. Well, do you know copper? You know what copper selling for? Forty cents a pound. Okay, so copper, if you compare that, here's a hundred thousand dollar shield, and then here's a shield. Weighed with about three dollars worth of copper. What's happened? The glory has diminished. And Rehoboam had traded golden shields for copper or brass. And the reason being, gold was more expensive than brass. You know, the Bible says that our lives are going to be tried by fire. The gold, silver, and precious stone will remain. The wood, hay, and stubble will be burned up. And I want you to understand that you inherited, when you become a child of God, you inherited golden shields, if you please, from our Savior. We inherited a glorious life, not just to be lived in heaven, but to be lived on earth. You see, he taught us when you pray, Our Father which art in heaven, how be thy name? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So God wants us to be glorious here. And he gave us everything we need. He gave us, him, he gave us the Spirit to walk within us and to empower us. He said you have access to the Father. So whatsoever you would ask, you know, we can have from the Father. He gave us his word that we might guide our life. When you become a child of God, it all is put within your fist. But isn't it amazing how often we choose copper instead of gold? You know, yes. Our Father is there to meet our needs if we ask. And isn't it amazing that our prayer life sometimes just consists of, of just once in a while when we really are in a bad spot and we need some help? You know, if something tragic happens, let's pray. I don't want to be critical of our prayer list, but I want you to think about something for a moment. 
What do we ask for that's not an emergency? What do we ask for if it's not somebody who has a physical emergency? Well, I want you to know, I believe God heals. I, I believe God is the God who created these bodies. He can remake them. He knows what's wrong with them. He can touch them. He can heal them. I'm thankful for that. Amen? But I want you to tell you, there's a golden thing that he does that's much more valuable than that. He can take a rotten soul and make a, make a creature that is a saint of God. God can take this sinner and make him a saint. And I want to tell you, that's the golden axe which our God can do for us. So he says, okay, let me ask you a question. Have you told, traded golden prayers for copper prayers? Well, what about our faith? Do you know what the Bible says? Faith is our shield against the, quen- the, the fiery darts of, the, of Satan. Now, let me ask you a question again. How many of you would say that Satan has been very active in fighting the church? How many of you would say Satan's been pretty active in fighting against me? You had any struggles with him lately? Well, let me tell you something about gold and copper. Gold is the densest material on earth. And tin is kind of thin. Now, bear with me. I don't want to be in this position, but if you're going to shoot at me, and I got a choice between a gold shield and a copper shield, I want the gold. I mean, you know, you don't think about gold taking punishment, but I want to tell you what, it'll stop the it's errors a lot more than copper. Faith. We sing the song, is the victory that overcomes the world. So I want you to take just a moment and examine your faith. Now, the strength of faith is not the energy you put into it. The strength of faith is what you put your faith in. Are you with me? It it don't make any difference how strong your faith is from your point of view, if it's anchored to the wrong thing. Uh, one of my favorite stories about that is, is really a James Dobson story. He talks about an individual that he knew who was putting a roof on his house. And, uh, you know, he was concerned about that, and his wife was very concerned about it. And she said, now, honey, I don't want you going up there without tying yourself off. So he got a rope. And he climbed up on the roof, and he tied it around himself. And it was long, but it wasn't quite long enough to reach the tree, so he tied it to the bumper of the car. <laughs> and that loving wife, about noontime, realizing her husband was getting hungry, thought she was going to go get him a special treat, you know, with a drive through And she jumps in the car and goes. Now, what happened? That which he trusted in kind of caused a problem, right? Because when the car went, the rope went, and he went. What do you have your faith in? Some of the copper investments is faith in your good works. You know, some people are so, so sure they're going to go to heaven because they've been pretty good. You know, I, I'm good to my neighbors, and I give to charity, and you know, I, I, I'm pretty, pretty fair with everybody. And, you know, I give a little money to church, and I do this, I do that. And I do the best I can. And some people are willing to face God with that. Now, here's the problem with it. The problem is all of our righteousness, according to the Scripture, is filthy rags. It doesn't quite get there. And some people have a great faith in their religion, you know, because they practice church so well, they're going to go to heaven. You know, when it comes to religion, Christians kind of fall behind because we're not religious. Religious is men's efforts to reach up to God. Christianity is God's efforts to reach down to man. 
It's a matter of believing, not doing. He's done it, therefore we receive it. But some people have this idea, you know, if I pray long enough, if I give enough, if I travail enough, if I say the right words and don't say the wrong words, if I wear a good religious cloak, then I'll get to heaven. I want to tell you that's copper. It won't work. It won't work because we're not good enough. Now, you might be better than your neighbor, but let me say this. Just being a little bit better than somebody else that's also not good enough is still not good enough. In fact, there was none good but him whose name was Jesus, and that's why he had to come, so that we who aren't good enough might have everlasting life. So you need a golden faith. You need a golden testimony or glory. Now, I want you to think about these shields for just a moment. Gold is the least tarnishable of metals. You don't have to shine gold. Now, if you have something that's gold, you have to shine. It's because there's some impurities in it. Okay? You got 10 karat gold or 24 karat gold, not pure gold. And so it'll tarnish. But pure gold is untarnishable. It is as shiny a year from now as it is now. But copper's not that way. Copper has to be constantly scrubbed. It has to be shined and polished in order to make it bright. And, and you can make copper shine. And when the king went to the Lord's house and they're standing up on the hill, I'm sure the sun reflected. Some people said, you know, are those gold? If they look closer, they see it's copper. These copper shields, remember I said Solomon put the gold shields in the, in the museum. Everybody can look at them. The golden shields was hid in the guard's house. And it was only brought out when the king went to the Lord's house. Okay. What's your Christian witness? What's your Christian witness? Is it just a copper shield that only shows up when you come to the Lord's house? I mean, would people know that you're a Christian if you didn't go to church? How close can your life be examined? You see... The shield stood way off here. The people was down here. And as soon as the king left the house, they went in the guard's house. They kept it to themselves. Because it didn't measure up. What kind of witness, what kind of glory do you reflect of the glory of Christ in your life? Is it golden? Is it on display? Do the people where you work know you're a child of God? The people at school know you're a child of God? Your neighbors know you're a child of God? Or do you keep it hid? Keep it secret? We live in a world that is dark and dying. We live in a world without hope. And we live in a world where the things that people hoped in is beginning to fade more and more. More people think now the government's going to fail than ever before. We think the economy's going to sink. And people are anxious. And I want to say right now today, people need and want a word of encouragement, a hope that goes beyond this world more than ever any time before. And it's up to the church to provide it. We need golden shields. We, we need to be out there and say, you know, here's the God that we serve. And look what a difference he made in my life and what he can do in your life. 
I can face this awful world with a smile because I know who's coming to, again, who's going to be here. I know what he has in store. I've got a victory. Gold for brass. But I want you to know, he also said he'd turn our brass into gold. Did you know that? Now, he said to this church of Laodicea, he said, you've had it all wrong. But I want you to know, I, I haven't given up on you. I haven't given up on you. I'm going to stand at your door and I knock, and if you open the door, I'll come into you. I want you to, to purchase pure gold. I, I want you to purchase clean robes. I want you to be what I designed for you to be. I want you not lukewarm. Let's get hot. Let's get hot. Well, how does he do it? How does he give us that? In Isaiah, he says, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll bring gold for brass. <laughs> he said, I'll bring silver for wood. That which is going to burn up, if you put it in my hands, I'll make it last. I'll make it beautiful. He also said he's the refiner of gold and silver. Do you know what a refiner is? He's one now. Today we do everything mechanically. But we're back in the day when, when there was a person who would take a pot of metal and would heat it until he is either silver or gold. And he'd sit there and he'd scrape out the impurities, you know. Do you know what Jesus said is purchase for yourself pure gold, right? Pure gold. Well, how back then before all the, the abilities that we have to measure metals and, and analyze it, how did they know it was pure gold? Well, here's how they would know. The refiner would set over that pot and they'd keep the heat under it. And he'd skim off all the impurities. The tin would come out, you know. The copper would come out. He'd keep the heat up. And keep working on it until he saw his face in the metal. When he could see a clear picture of himself in that which was being tried, it was pure. How does he make us pure? How do we know we're pure? When Jesus sees himself in our life. And if Jesus can see himself in our life, others can see Jesus in us. The early church became known as Christians in Antioch. Do you know why? They acted so much like Jesus. People were calling them Christians or Christ-like. Christ-like. I know we hear people criticizing Christianity today. But I wonder if they saw more of Christ in Christianity, if there'd be less criticism. I wonder if we'd give more hope to a world, and people would want to live beside a Christian instead of being afraid of a Christian, if they saw more of Christ in the Christian, in our life and who we are. Yes. It's a matter of surrendering to him to say, make me what you want me to be. Are we willing to say to Jesus, Jesus, put us in the refiner field, a fire. Do whatever it takes. But Lord, we want to be gold, not brass. I know we're going to go to heaven. I know we've accepted Christ. We're going to get to heaven. But we don't want to go empty-handed. For he said our works will be tried by fire. 
The gold, silver, and precious stone will remain, and the wood, hay, and stubble will be burned up. That's those who are built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. That is, those who are going to heaven. But we want to go in with victory. Not just slipping in the back door as one that's burned with fire. We want a reward. We want to be gold. And I want to say, closing these thoughts to every individual who's here, especially someone, if you've never known Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're looking over your life and you're saying, you know, I haven't always made it golden. There's, you know, I haven't really done all that great with what God's given me. I've got some things in my life I wish I could change and get rid of. I, I, I want to be bright. I, I want to be what God wants me to be. I'd like to be a Christian, but I just got so much impurities in my life. I, I, I'm just not where, I, I just don't believe I could be a Christian. I want to say something to you. The refiner can take whatever troubles of your life and turn it into gold. He can take the impurities out where the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all unrighteousness. He can make you as righteous and as white today as he is when you put your faith in him. And he can strengthen you. And he can purify you. Until one day we'll be just like him when we get home. And all you have to do is just surrender to him. Let him be the master. If you believe in your heart, if you, if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, and you're willing to trust him, if you're willing to say, okay, I believe you died for me, you can have eternal life. For thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God has raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes the righteous, with the mouth confession is made in salvation. I didn't write that. But the Holy Spirit of God inspired Paul to put those words down so you could hear and you could trust him. That's what he did. I want to challenge you. When we was back home, we'd dare somebody to do something. And, uh, you know, if they didn't do it, you know what we'd say? We'd double dog dare you. In other words, that's more of a, that's more of a challenge, right? Well, I'm going to say something to you, you fellow children of God. I want to double dog dare you to trust Jesus to make your gold pure. Say, okay, Lord, I, I, I'm willing. I dare you to say, God, okay, God, do whatever it takes in my life to make me what you want me to be. I dare you. But I also want to dare you to do this. If you don't know Christ, I want to dare you to try him. I want to dare you to give a chance. Simply trust him. Our Father and our God, again, we thank you for your goodness. Lord, I, I thank you that you were willing to take just nothing, less than nothing. Someone who fought against you, warred against you. Someone had no goodness of his own. Someone like me. And say that you're going to make me a child of God. I can understand that, Father. Why would you love me that much? But you did. And I thank you for it, Father. Now I pray that you would take your words and speak to each heart in this life. And we ask it in Christ's name.
as we stand, as we sing together. You know, it's not just a sign to go home. It's a time to do business with God. And I want to challenge you to trust him. If you have sickness, let him know. Thank you so much for coming, sharing, worshiping with us this morning. And I pray that we will say to God, God, make us great. Make us what you want us to be, that we might shine for you. All right? Let's bow our heads together. Brother Earl, would you please dismiss us?